Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Chad. We're going to call this the last build video in this series, even though we've got a lot more to do when it comes to testing and tuning. In this video, we're going to go over the last couple of instructions, motor plate, shock installation, front tower installation. It'll be pretty short. A lot of this stuff is straightforward, but there's a few little gotchas that I want to make sure that are covered. Then in the next videos of this thing, hopefully it will be outside. Uh, we're going to do some stuff on the RX-8, show you guys how that all gets flashed and everything. Wheelie bar tuning and wheelie bar setup. I'm still on the fence about what shocks I want to run, what springs, and how I want to actually mount it because Five Star has a lot of different mounting options already. I think they've got three or four different revisions out. So let's take a look here at the bench and we'll go over what's going to happen in here. So just to recap, in the last video, if you didn't see it, the playlist link will be in the description below and I will put a link up here in the corner for you. We just installed the entire rear end. So at this point, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and build up your motor plate. Your motor plate's gonna consist, of course, of the plate. You're gonna get some spacers that are gonna go in between here to take up the slack, not a big deal. And then you are gonna attach the waterfall brace to the chassis and we'll take a look at that here on the bench and show you what that actually looks like. All right guys, so here is our motor plate and of course it's covered up by a very large spur gear because that is one thing that is awesome about this car is you can use large spur gears. Caution, what you want to do is you are going to want to Dremel out these holes where your motor mounts will go. If not, they will not fit. You also are going to want to extend them a little bit on each side so that way you can run the larger spur gears. So if we take a closer look at mine, you can see I've got like a 96 tooth in there and there you go. That's how everything is. Right here, you're gonna see those little shock spacers I was talking about that are in there. And then these two long things that are going over the motor and attaching to the blue servo mount right there, those are the waterfall braces. Now, right in the middle right there, there is a little spacer. I cut that off of the motor guard that comes with the associated kit. So that way I can take up some slack there. So everything is super solid. That holds, you know, pretty much bonds everything together right there. And that's pretty much it for the rear end. Shocks, you can go ahead and start building your shocks any way that you want to. I'm using the soft springs back here that pretty much everybody uses on this build. You're gonna wanna mount your rear body posts however you like. I've kinda got mine upside down here just to lower it a little bit. Fits the C7 body perfectly. Uh, you can see on the back real quick here that I do have the wheelie bar mounted. I'm using a couple pieces that Five Star has. Uh, obviously, you can see the big weight box back here. Uh, not sure about that yet, what I'm gonna do. I have their 3D printed ex shock extended mount and also the aluminum shock mount, wheelie bar mount pieces that they have. And they actually have a third piece now that will actually, you can put tungsten weights into to get you more weight right there if you want it. I just kind of have these little shocks mocked up here. Definitely not the way that's gonna run. Gonna change that around, but we'll talk about that once we get out onto the streets. Now, when it comes to the front end, we pretty much had this all built and everything was done. All we needed to do was just go ahead, finish our shock builds, do the installation. There's no secret when it comes to this at all. I did forget to mention that in the rear, I am using 21 millimeter shafts as well. I'm not using the 28 that came with the kit. That pretty much be is the way that everybody is doing things. Uh, I wired up everything and got stuff powered up so that way the servo was centered before I finally attached this whole assembly. Went ahead and put the screw th through their servo saver mount, mounted everything up and it just worked out perfect. There is one thing I probably am still gonna do, which is drill a hole right here and put in a small screw or bolt to hold the hinge pins in. That is kind of optional. You don't really have to do that. Up front here, you can see the other big weight box that I have 
from five star this is full of weights the back one's still full of weights no idea what we're going to be doing there when we we're all done we're going to have to just kind of balance everything out and see how it works on the scales which we'll be weighing this one up we'll weigh the r10 up and everything when the scales get here we've got the electronics installed the rx8 i have it all flashed and everything like that on 280 but i am going to be flashing back to 276 that way we can use more of the functionality in the Futaba to control all of our stuff. The last thing I have to figure out is how I'm going to mount the battery. My Max Amps battery packs are not going to be here for another, who knows, two to four weeks. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to run my long stick packs in there. All you have is the standoff mounts with the stars or the top plate that you can get optionally. Probably what I will do is just put some Velcro down and then I also have some Velcro straps that I'll probably just run up along the body here and go ahead and get the battery secured. So that way we can go out and do some uh, fun test runs and everything like that. But other than that, that is pretty much about it guys. Everything is built, installed. I'm just waiting on a couple more things to go mainly for the wheelie bar, some different shocks and their new side plates that are a little bit thicker and will accept more shock mounting positions. They're called the Swiss cheese bars. That's gonna be pretty sweet. And I am also waiting on their standoff kits because the replacement standoffs that I ordered don't really fit this back here i don't like that movement and the standoffs that come with the kit are also plastic um there's more places to mount more standoffs but i just haven't did that uh this rear end is a little complicated but depending upon which way you go from the factory to this mount to the next generation the third revision that they have which really isn't a revision it's just a different way of doing things is gonna change that. The bottom line is you're gonna have some bearings in here that are gonna allow some rotation and a little bit of movement. I've got mine pretty much locked down right now, so you can see it moves a little bit. So, yeah, it comes down to just tuning preference and everything else. Whew. So that's it guys. That's where we're going to stop this build. There's really not much more I could do. I could end up going and in the every, every minute detail, but I have a feeling that things are just going to keep on changing. It should be the overall same, but you know, who knows what they're going to do. They're constantly evolving this frame. So we're going to get into tuning set up all that kind of stuff here. I've got the setup station scales, all that kind of stuff that we're going to use on this and on the DR10 and we'll just see how things go. So we will see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching in peace.